Let's turn to Congressman Ron Paul. Many political observers say he's on track to win in Iowa, but today he's back home in Texas. Congressman Paul, welcome and Happy New Year. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to be with you. So your rivals have really started to unload on you on the home stretch, uh, given your prominent perch in the polls. Newt Gingrich says your views are, quote, totally out of the mainstream of every decent American. John Huntsman has a web ad calling you unelectable, citing a decade worth of newsletters published under your name containing bigoted statements against minorities. And even the Des Moines Register poll that shows you essentially tied for first with Mitt Romney says that you are leading the pack in terms of who is least electable in a general election. This is a real area of vulnerability for you. How do you convince Republican voters that you are, in fact, electable against President Obama? Well, that, that whole thing is a contradiction in terms of I'm leading into polls. I mean, I'm electable. I've been elected 12 times in Texas. When people get to know me, we're doing well in the polls. Our crowds are getting bigger, and the people who are complaining are the ones who are way down in the polls. So they don't have a whole lot of credibility about uh, my electability. But uh, indeed, uh, nobody can prove anything until we have a real election. And uh, we're going to have a real caucus vote, a uh, straw vote on uh, Tuesday night. That's going to tell us a whole lot. And as uh, a matter of fact, our campaign feels pretty good about how things are going. But certainly, Congressman, you would concede that, that some of your views, some of the principles you hold in terms of drug legalization or in terms of, I, don't, I know you wouldn't call it isolationist, but a non-interventionalist policy, in the world. Uh, these are views that are not shared by a majority of Americans. And, and I think the concern among Republicans is once they are better known, that would hurt you. Well, see, I think that's where the contradiction is. Quite frankly, I don't believe that statistic because I think the majority are with me. Uh, uh, what percent want to come out of Afghanistan? It's like 75, uh, 80 percent. How did George Bush win in the year 2000? He talked about a humble foreign policy, non-invention, no nation building, no policing of the world. I mean, and, and Obama, Obama was seen as the peace candidate just uh, three years ago. So I would say the American people are with me more now than ever before. They're with me on cutting spending. Nobody else is proposing cutting spending. I'm cutting. I want to cut a trillion dollars out of the budget. And, and this support, I get support from all the Republicans on this. And uh, I, I would say that uh, it remains to be seen. But I feel very comfortable with the growing number of people that come out to our rallies and the enthusiasm. I tell you what, I think it's a, it's a mistake if people want to write me off and say that I, I am not with the, uh, with the people. Matter of fact, it's so appealing that we get a lot of independents and a lot of Democrats coming to our rally. And that's what you need in order to win elections. So uh, I, I'm pretty optimistic about what's going on. And of course, I've always been optimistic about the message of liberty and the Constitution limited government. And I think it's catching on. I think the people have come around to believing that the government fails in their efforts to do good. They want to be a good policeman of the world. They want to provide goods and houses for everybody. And look at what happened to the housing bubble. And look at the prolongation of these wars overseas. So people are looking now more carefully at a constitutional approach to government. All right, Congressman, we have a lot of issues to discuss and only a few more minutes left. I do want to ask you about those newsletters published under your name in the 80s and 90s. In the 90s, you defended them. In 2001, you said you did not write them. You now say you did not write them, you did not read them, and you disavow them. So just if you could give a straight answer on this, who wrote these newsletters and do you okay, still associate I, with these people? Well, I think your, uh, your assessment there is mixed up because the reporting has been bad. I did not, I wrote a lot of part of the letter and I've never said I did. I wrote some of the, you know, the economic parts. I was not the editor, I was the publisher and there were some very bad sentences put in. I did not write those. I did not review them who wrote and that them? is an error on my part. But I condemned them. I, I condemned them. I don't know exactly who wrote them. It's a, you know, I had eight or nine people working for me back then and a lot of people wrote a lot of different things. So uh, I, I've condemned them and, uh, and, and did not write them. And and I've said this quite a few times. So uh, I just don't think that uh, uh, that in itself is going to have long legs because people who know me know exactly what my thoughts are. People know everything about that in my district. It's, it's never been, you know, a, a big issue at all. And most importantly, on the issue of race relations, 
I'm the one that really addresses it when we look at the drug war and the imprisonments, the court systems, the death penalty, the imbalance on the suffering of the minorities in our military, whether we have a draft or no draft. So I think the court system is very, very biased, whether, whether mm -hmm. it's the issuance of the death penalty. If you look at it, it is unbiased. I'm the only one that's talking about that. So I'm right. the true civil libertarian when it comes to this. And I think that uh, people ought to you know, look at my positions there rather than dwelling on eight sentences that I didn't write and uh, didn't authorize and have been, uh, you know, apologetic about because it shouldn't have been there and it was terrible stuff. Well, I think it's more than eight sentences, but, but uh, I, moving on, one of your cl former close aides recently said that you, quote, engaged in conspiracy theories, including perhaps the 9-11 attacks were coordinated with the CIA and that the Bush administration might have known about the attacks ahead of time. So, have you ever expressed in front of anyone? No, wait, 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 wait! Don't, 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 don't go any further than that. That's complete nonsense. It's nonsense. Just stop that. That's not, complete not nonsense. true. You, yeah. I, I, no, no, I, I did not. I never bought into that stuff. I never talked about it. Okay. Um, about the conspiracy of Bush, of Bush knowing about this? No, no. Come on, come on. Let's be reasonable. Okay. That's just off the wall. The uh, and then lastly on the newsletters, I just want to ask this. You published a for-profit newsletter under your own name for decades, didn't know it ex included extremely offensive statements. Assuming what you're saying is 100% true, you did not see these sentences, doesn't this quest call into question your management style? Well, yeah, I think so, but nobody, I, I don't think anybody in the world has been perfect on management, everybody that's ever worked for them. Uh, so uh, yes, it's a, it's, it's, it's a flaw, but I think it's a human flaw, and I think it is uh, probably shared by a lot more people than myself, because uh, you know, when you have hundreds of people over the years that have worked for you, and uh, it's happened even in big corporations or big newspapers or on TV stations, you can't monitor every once in a while somebody on a TV station will say something, but does the owner and the publisher, you know, get blamed for what the person says? So no, you can't monitor every single thing, but it is a flaw. And uh, of course, uh, I, uh, I admit that uh, I'm an imperfect person and, and didn't monitor that as well. But uh, to, to paint my whole life on that is a, a gross distortion because we have to remember, I didn't write them, I didn't see them before that, and I have disavowed them. That to me is the most important thing. The only other thing that we should do is you and others should look at all my other statements in my defense of civil liberties and race relations. Believe me, if anybody cared about it, all they have to do is go to the internet. And the defense is honest and straightforward and you will get an honest assessment of my views on race relations. And that's all I ask for people to do because I feel quite comfortable with myself. I know where the shortcomings were, but I'm very comfortable with my viewpoints, believing very sincerely those people who know me know exactly where the d defect is in race relations today. It's in the judicial system where minorities are mistreated more so than anybody else. All right, Congressman and Dr. Ron Paul, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Good luck on Tuesday and hope you have a great 2012. Thank you.